Hello guys, this is Zhi Cheng from the Tech Revolutionist. The time is finally here. AMD's new Zen 2 CPUs are here. So today we're going to take a look at two different motherboards from Gigabyte, uh, specifically under the Aorus branding. So we have two new motherboards over here. This is the Gigabyte Aorus X570 Aorus Extreme motherboard, followed by the X70 Aorus Master. And this video is actually brought to you by Motion Source. So the new X570 chipset from AMD is actually considered as a more top-end chipset. It's not going to replace the current X470. And you must understand the main difference between the X570 chipset as well as the X470 chipset is the inclusion of the new PCI Express 4.0 standard. Of course, with the new PCI Express 4.0, we can get extreme speeds, two times faster than the usual PCI Express 3.0. So of course, the X470 motherboards are still going to be in the market. If you are looking for something better in terms of the storage capabilities, or if you need more bandwidth in terms of uh, on the PCI Express bus, definitely go for the X570. Of course, we can also understand that the, five, uh, the X570 motherboards will be slightly more expensive than the current X470. So, uh, for that, uh, we we'll probably need to make a choice between these two chipsets first. So for these two motherboards we have here today, we firstly, at the top of the line, we have the X570 Aorus Extreme, followed by slightly that is a, a little bit more affordable. It is actually the X570 Aorus Master motherboard. They are both from Gigabyte. So for a start, we have the X570 Aorus Extreme motherboard. So Extreme usually means it's actually really the top of the line. So what you get over here is no compromise, right? You really get the best out of the best. So interestingly about the Aorus Extreme is that it is the only motherboard in the market that doesn't have a fan cooling the X570 chipset. So it is totally passively cooled unlike any other variants or other models from other brands out there. Okay, this is because firstly, it is cooled by a very beefy heatsink as you can see over here. In fact, this is one whole piece of metallic uh, heatsink that covers the whole area of the motherboard. In fact, probably up to 70% of the whole motherboard is covered by a heatsink. Moving on to the power delivery of this motherboard, um, this is actually using a true 16-phase uh, power delivery system. Unlike other motherboard manufacturers which uses something called the VRM doubler, which essentially split one uh, power phase into two. Compared to the usual design of a doubler, of course, you will get a lot more uh, stable currents throughout the CPU, so you can of course reach a much higher overclocks. Coupled together with the heatsink and cooling system, definitely if you are going to overclock your whole system and overclock your CPU, your motherboard, this is the motherboard that you are going to look out for. So to support the power delivery of this whole motherboard, firstly, we can see that there are two main 8-pin CPU EPS connectors over here. So this ensures that there is enough current flowing through the CPU for good overclocks. Interestingly, for this motherboard, the 24-pin connector is actually left on the side instead of facing upwards. So it's actually making it a lot easier for you to connect the 24-pin directly onto this motherboard instead of having it uh, standing up vertically. So moving on to the I.O. area, we can see that this uses an integrated I.O. shoe. So there is a need for you to fiddle with the I.O. shoe and cut your fingers uh, while we are building your PC. So let's take a look at what's available over here. Firstly, we have a clear CMOS button. So wait for you to quickly clear your CMOS just in case your overclocks fail. Next, there is a BIOS flash button. Then we have four USB 3.0 port, followed by a 802.11ax Wi-Fi card. So you take note that this is the new AX standard which runs, which runs at um, gigabit speeds allowing you to reach extremely high speeds on your wireless uh, routers. And next, uh, there is two USB 3.0 ports followed by another two USB 3.1 ports. So these 3.1 ports are slightly faster than USB 3.0 at 10 gigabit per second. Moving on to the right, there is another two more USB 3.1 port as well as a gigabit LAN port. The special thing about this motherboard is, is one of the boards that fully integrates a 10 gigabit per second uh, Quantia Ethernet port. So you can actually run through 10 gigabit per second Ethernet through this just directly at this motherboard. Next, there is another USB 3.1 port as well as a USB 3.1 Type-C port. 
And this motherboard actually has a built-in uh, DAC, which is a digital analog converter. So you can actually um, run uh, dedicated headphones and have extremely good sound quality coming out directly from this motherboard. Um, you can also see that this sound chip, uh, the, the, the ports, the jacks or the audio jacks are all gold plated. So that you can really get very good noise free sounds directly out from this motherboard. Moving on to the PCI Express expansion area, we can see that there are three uh, PCI X16 physical slots right here. The first one runs at the X16 mode, the second one and the third one runs both at X8. Do take note that these are all PCI Express 4.0 standard, so you actually get two times the bandwidth as compared to your usual PCI Express 3.0, which is also exclusive. This is actually exclusive to the X570 chipset. In between these lanes, this PCI Express lanes, we can actually see three M.2 slots. They are the M.2 2280 length, and they, of course, they are all PCI Express 4.0 standard as well, which allows you to include all your different and the newest SSDs out there in the market. And lastly, for storage, we have six, six gigabit per second SATA ports right over here. And of course, if you are looking at USB 3.0 uh, expansion on your cases, there are two other USB 3.0 front header extension right on this board. And of course, the last thing to take note of is the Aorus Extreme X570 actually comes with a very nice back plate. This back plate actually helps to increase the reliability of the motherboard as well as helping it to dissipate heat from the components from the back of this board. And in case if you're wondering where all the fan headers are, actually Gigabyte and Aorus team actually included the Aorus Fan Commander directly with this motherboard. So what the Fan Commander actually do right here is that it allows you to control eight additional fans as well as the RGB lighting that are on these fans. You can then actually connect the Aorus Fan Commander directly to the motherboard for full control of all these different fans. So if you don't need something that's too high-end and something that's more sensible in terms of money and how much it costs, do look out for the Aorus X570 Master Motherboard. So the first thing you can see that it doesn't have the, all that fancy heatsink covering the, the whole motherboard because there is a dedicated fan right in the X570 chipset. So you don't need the extra metal uh, portions and the parts directly on the motherboard. Um, let's move on to the main features, right? So instead of a 16-phase direct power to the CPU, it uses a 14-phase instead. So there isn't really a big difference, just that probably if you are really driving the CPU to extreme speeds, you will, you will be better off with the extreme. Moving on to the I.O. area of the Aorus Master motherboard. Firstly, we have the clear CMOS button, followed by a BIOS flash button. Next, there is a 802.11 AX Wi-Fi card that is built in directly on this motherboard as well. Then we have four times USB 3.0 ports and then another USB, another two USB 3.0 ports over here. And next, instead of uh, four USB 3.1 ports, we only get two USB 3.1 ports directly on uh, the Aorus Master. But instead of a 10 gigabit per second a Ethernet card, we only get a 2.5 gigabit on this board. Of course, both boards still have an individual 1 gigabit per second Ethernet port. And over here, there is a USB 3.1 Type-A port, followed by a USB 3.1 Type-C port. Unlike the higher-end ESS9218 chip on the Aorus Extreme, this actually uses the ESS9118 instead, which is slightly a little bit less uh, spec'd, but of course, they still perform as well as 9218. Now moving on to the PCI Express area, we still get the same configuration as the Aorus Extreme. The main difference is that we get an additional PCI Express X1 slot right over here. Moving on to the PCI Express area, we can see that there are three PCI Express 4.0 X16 slot similar to the Aorus Extreme. At the same point of time, there are also three M.2 slots, which is also of the PCI Express 4.0 standard. The only difference between the Aorus Extreme is that the last slot at the end is actually slightly shorter at the 2240 length. Similarly, both boards also have six SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. And lastly, of course, we want to talk about the backplate. Instead of a full backplate, we only get a standard usual backplate that supports the whole motherboard on the back. 
So comparing between these two motherboards, if you are the one who really wants only the best of the best, go for the Aorus Extreme because it has got the best ever uh, power delivery system for your very high overclocks, followed by a state-of-the-art passive design for the whole motherboard, which no other uh, variants out in the markets and other models that can replicate. However, if you are a more sensible bunch, uh, you would probably go with the Aorus Master instead because it still has got most of the high-end features that is also available on the Aorus Extreme. For example, if you don't need 10 gigabit per second, uh, if you don't need 10 gigabit per second network card, just go for the Aorus Master because a 2.5 gigabit per second is probably more than good enough for your actual work. And that concludes our video on the comparison between the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Extreme as well as the X570 Aorus Master Motherboard. So do look out for our further videos in the future on the AMD new X570 platform as well as the Zen 2 processors. And I will see you guys next time. And of course, remember to subscribe to us and uh, click on the link in the description below uh, to read our actual review on our website.